At the end of the lesson, you are expected to identify the steps for optimization using Hessian matrix, determine the roles of eigenvalues and eigenvectors in optimization using Hessian matrix, and appreciate the roles of eigenvectors and eigenvalues in optimization using Hessian matrix. In this lesson, we will not take into consideration high dimensional cases because in these cases, neural networks can be too complex to analyze. So we will just make everything very simple. So what we will do is that we are just going to consider a quadratic form. So before we continue, don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notification bell to receive updates of our machine learning, deep learning, and natural language processing lessons. So as what we have learned, a quadratic form is expressed mathematically as, so we have one half, a one one x squared plus a one one x one x two plus one half a two two x squared two plus b two x two plus c. So maybe you would like to ask me what is this one? Of course, if you are very much familiar with matrix, then you would understand and you would know what these subscripts mean. So this is the row, the first row, first column, okay? First, this is the row, this is the column, okay? So it means the first element in the first row, the first element in the second, uh, I mean in the first column. First element in the first row, second element in the second column. Okay, so that is what it means. Okay, so if this becomes rusty in our minds, I suggest you review your basic lessons on algebra and that really helps you to be able to understand properly what this one means, especially uh, matrix algebra. So if you're going to write this in matrix form, then the form is this. So we have one half x transpose ax minus b transpose x plus c. So of course we would not be able to go through the process of dealing with this one because we're done with this. So we learned about how to define a model and we've learned about the different parameters that we have to take note of, okay? So one thing that we have to take note of is that matrix A is symmetric. Let me write symmetric. Do you still remember symmetric? So when we say a certain matrix is symmetric, it means to say that it has the same number of columns and row. So when a row, for example, has two elements, then also a column has two. Or if we have two rows, then we have two columns. Okay, so maybe you would ask, you would want to ask me, why is it that the matrix is symmetric? So the reason for being symmetric is that the continuous and commutative properties of the Hessian matrix. So we discussed about these properties in our previous lesson. So I suggest you watch our, our previous lesson for you to be able to have a better understanding of this lesson. So I'm going to give the description, I mean the link in the description below for you to be able to easily navigate. So if you have a deeper or a deeper understanding of quadratic form, then you have an edge because it is the key to understanding Hessian. So you can see this form, this one, in where. So I'm so sure a lot of things are going on right now in your mind. I believe you are asking and wondering about the image of the Hessian in two-dimensional space or even in three-dimensional spaces. So now, I'm going to use a piece of paper to show you some of the common shapes of the Hessian. Okay, so this is our piece of paper. So first is that we have this shape. Okay, 
So this is the first shape of a Hessian, of course. It would be curvy in this side and in this side too. Perfect curve. Okay. And also, we have this kind of shape. So as you can see, this is just uh, the opposite of the first, first shape. And also, we have this shape. Okay. It's like that. The shape is like that. Okay. This is another shape. See? And also, we have this shape. Okay. So, this is another shape of... Okay. This is another shape of the Hessian. So, I would like to note, and please take note of it, that the shape of the Hessian depends on the Hessian itself. So, towards the end of the lesson, um, we, will, we will learn about the underlying scenarios that affect the different shapes of our Hessian. So, as you can see, the function may curve in different ways as what I have so shown you. So, it could be like that. It could be like that. It could be something like, um, like this. Or it could be something like this. Okay? So, the most important question that we have to deal with is how exactly the curvature is determined by the Hessian. So the answer to this qu question centers on the relationship between the shape of the quadratic form and the Hessian eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So if you would like to learn more about eigenvalues and eigenvectors, so we discussed that in our lesson about <clears throat> principal component analysis, so we learned how to get it and we also learned its significance as far as the PCA is concerned. So in this case, we are studying eigenvalues and eigenvectors in relation to Hessian matrix. So I will provide the link below in the, uh, in the description box so that you can just easily navigate and please study. So as you could see, our, just, our lessons just interrelate with one another. So it's better to have a solid grasp of one lesson for you to be able to easily navigate to the next, okay? So eigenvalues, we have this symbol, and eigenvectors, <clears throat> so we have this symbol too, are very important because they connect various equations and the analysis that surrounds the Hessian and our intuitive understanding. That is also what I've said. So eigenvalues and eigenvectors are also very important in analyzing matrices so that we will be educated about the characteristics of a certain matrix. So practically, we will know how our set of data behave. So as far as the Hessian is concerned, <clears throat> excuse me, it is very interesting to ask what are the important properties of these two? We have the eigenvector and the eigenvalues. So there are two important properties that we have to take note of. The first one is that each eigenvector represents a direction where a curvature is independent of other directions. And the second one is that the curvature in the direction of the eigenvector is determined by the eigenvalue. Let me underline some of the most important words here. Okay, so what do you think would be the effect of eigenvalue? If our eigenvalue is larger, let me write here, if it is larger, then we can expect that our curvature is also larger. Remember the curvature? So, for example, we have, if, if it is larger, of course, the curvature could be like that. Of course, if it's smaller, we, we can expect something like this. Just the curvature is not that large, okay? So, if it is positive, if the curvature is positive, then 
I mean, if the eigenvalue is positive, then the curvature is also positive. And of course, we, um, we can also say that if it's negative, then we can expect that it is also negative. What do we mean by this? Then we have to draw our Cartesian, right? So if it is positive, it's like that. If it's negative, it could be like this. It's going down. Okay? Or it could be like here. It's going down. Okay? So with respect to the eigenvectors, the gradient only changes in the direction it points in. So it means to say that all non-diagonal elements of the Hessian are zero for the eigenvectors. So I don't need to draw here an example of the Hessian because we already had that in our previous lesson. So remember the diagonal and the non-diagonal. So again, let me repeat that. It means to say that all non-diagonal elements of a Hessian or the Hessian are zero for the eigenvectors. Okay, now let's go back to our 3D presentation earlier. This is more exciting actually. So looking at the shape of the curvature, we can deduce the eigenvalues and we have to take note of this one, the direction, the representation of the direction and the, the values of the eigenvalue. Okay, so let's go back to the first shape that we had. Remember this? So this is our first shape. Okay, okay, it's like that. Okay, it's clearly. So here, the edges are actually up. So it's it's pointing upwards or it's curving upwards. So what does this mean? So if the curvature is like this, it means that we have two positive eigenvalues. Okay, now let's go to the second shape. And it's, this is just the opposite of our first shape. So what's the meaning of this? So obviously, this is the opposite of the first one. And as you could see, the curve or the curving is pointing downwards. So in this case, it means that we have two negative eigenvalues. Okay, what about our third shape? What does this mean? Let me show to you first, in case you forget it. Okay, see? So, as you could see, that this shape is actually more special. Okay, I'm going to put this so that you could see. Okay, so see? Okay, so this is the shape. So, aside from the fact that this is, this is more special, here, one of its eigenvalues is zero. So as you could see, the loss is flat across one axis. See the flat here? So this one, this axis here becomes flat, right? So that's the meaning of this shape. Now, what about a shape like this? Let me execute. Okay, so does the shape is somewhat like this? Right. Okay. So as you could see, so let me turn this one around so you could see. Okay. So what does this kind of shape mean? What does this one show? So this shape shows that one is negative and the other is positive. What is this for? Why do we have to study this? Eigenvalues and eigenvectors are very important in linear differential equations. It finds applications in determining a rate of change or deciding whether or not to maintain relationships between two variables. After all, being said and done, let's try this. What are the properties of eigenvectors and eigenvalues as far as Hessian matrix is concerned? And how do eigenvalues affect the shape of the Hessian. Leave your answers in the comments below so that we would be able to have a very rich interaction and exchange of ideas. Do not forget to subscribe, like, and share. 
please click the bell button to be notified every time we have a new session. See you in the next lesson.